Hello, my name is Joe Kennedy, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a walking challenge using the Challenge Runner system. I'm going to quickly go in and create a challenge, add the walking activity to it, and then add participants to the challenge as well. Um, I will briefly uh, switch over to the user side and show what the system looks like from a user perspective as well as the admin's perspective. Uh, so let me get started. And when you create an account, first thing you'll notice is you have this big old um, create a new challenge button here. We click on it. Uh, we see we have some different options here. Uh, the first option being create a challenge from the bottom up, which is what we'll be using today. You also have some pre-canned uh, challenges that you can go into. Generate a walking challenge is right up at the top, but it kind of bypasses a few of the things I want to talk about. Uh, the last option down here I should also bring up, this allows you to go into um, some of our uh, templates that other admins have put into the system. Uh, and basically it's it can be used for getting ideas. You can select them into your account. So you can pull in other admins accounts as long as they've allowed, uh, allowed you to do that. Um, we give a little discount if you allow your templates to be used by others. It's just your template information. It is no, uh, no user information is ever shared with anyone. Uh, so let's go ahead and click this top option, click on next. Uh, let's give it a name. Let's call it December challenge for lack of an imagination. And I'll click on next. Next piece is the description. In the description, um, you can put, this is viewable by your users, so in here you would put your uh, rules for your challenge. If you're doing awards, then you can put your uh, information regarding your awards. You can put links to outside sources. You can also put images in here. It's rich text, so you can really put whatever you like. Uh, I'll put stuff in here for now. Uh, I should mention that everything, when we're stepping through these wizards, uh, everything can be edited afterwards. So I can put whatever I want here. And then later, uh, when I know more about the description itself, I can go back in and edit that. So I'm going to click Next. Uh, the next piece is going to ask how we want to display our leaderboard to our participants. Typical leaderboard shows the first and last name of all participants. So uh, that's typical. If we had something that was maybe a little more, um, uh, say a little more sensitive, like a weight loss challenge, or maybe your challenge was going to be opened up to a larger audience that may not know each other, uh, you may want to make an anonymous challenge. So with an anonymous challenge, your leaderboard shows the and when the user logs in, it'll show them their name on the leaderboard, but everybody else shows up as an anonymous ID. The third option is an individual challenge. That's used when the admin is just tasking their participants with um, hitting a certain goal. So maybe losing five pounds or um, walking 300,000 steps. So they don't see a traditional leaderboard with everybody else on it. They just see a bar chart showing how well they're doing in relationship to their goal. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. The next piece um, is the, the what I mentioned about uh, providing a little 10% discount if you'll let us use your template for others. So it uh, builds the community aspect of it. So I'm going to hit no here, hit finish, and our challenge is built. However, it doesn't actually do anything yet. Uh, for that, we need to add some activities. So we can add one or more activities by clicking on this little flashing plus. And what it does for me then, uh, since I going to build a walking challenge, might as well use trackers. Uh, trackers are good at steps. So if I uh, then select the data to input, I have some options, steps walked, distance tra traveled, active minutes, calories burned. These are all uh, activities that almost all trackers have in common. Uh, if I click on steps walked, I'll see the different trackers that are available. These are the ones, the trackers that we uh, connect to natively. Uh, so obviously there's the big ones in there, the Fitbits, the Garmin's, uh, Polar and Misfit. Um, some of the others we should uh, mention though are Apple Health, Google Fit, and Samsung Health. Uh, the importance of these is that they can pull in data from other sources that aren't on this list. There are literally hundreds of trackers that are available out there. Most of them do not have a third-party API, but in many cases, they will work with Apple Health or Google Fit or Samsung Health. So that's one way to get trackers that are not on this list into the system. However, before you just assume that they, they link up to these things, you should definitely check that out. All right, so we've selected that. We'll hit next. Uh, the system knows a little bit about our, our challenge now, so it's selected steps walked. It's going to make it an integer. 
Um, if we want to set an upper limit to our steps, maybe we have some distance runners, which usually every population has some, uh, and they're going to add a whole lot of steps very quickly. Um, if you don't want to demotivate some of your other participants that maybe you're trying to uh, uh, get involved with this, set an upper limit uh, to, your, uh, to your steps. In this case, I put 20,000 steps. Um, that's about 10 miles. That's quite a bit of steps if you're not actively running or working out quite a bit. So uh, it's 15 to 20,000 is a good, uh, good upper limit, but you certainly do not have to set this. This is definitely an optional feature. Uh, if we hit next, the next piece is going to ask us how we want to allow participants to enter data into the system. So by default, participants, trackers, and admins can enter data into the system. What that means is trackers are always going to be able to put in data, so are admins uh, that provided you're using trackers. But participants, this allows them to manually enter data into the system. Uh, the, the nice thing about that is for a walking challenge, you still may have members of your population that have uh, maybe an old school pedometer. They want to manually enter data in that way, or maybe they have a tracker that's not supported. They can manually input in data that way as well. So uh, one thing I'd recommend though is clicking on this little checkbox down here and restricting the number of days back that they can manually enter data. So what this will do, if I put a five in here, the participants will be able to go back five days, uh, but no farther. This keeps them from, um, whoever's been looking at the leaderboard and it's the last day of the challenge, keeps somebody from entering data for the last 30 days and kind of upsetting the uh, the apple cart. So this, uh, this is kind of a nice little safety feature uh, to keep people from getting mad at the end of the challenge. So we, uh, we leave the five in there, click next. Uh, it's selected daily, just meaning the data is going to be shown for that data. Day, sorry, for that day. Uh, weekly and monthly activities. These are useful when you're doing something like weight loss where you want periodic check-ins. Uh, this one-time activity, that's if you want to run a lunch and learn or there's some type of an activity you want to get your participants involved in, maybe a 5K, something like that, and you want to give them credit for doing it just that one time. Uh, so we'll leave this alone. We'll hit next. The next piece uh, allows us to put a multiplier on our data. Uh, if you just have one activity in your challenge, in this case, we're just putting in a walking activity, just leaving one step is equal to one challenge point works out great. So uh, they have 10,000 steps, they'll see 10,000 on the leaderboard. Now, if they, um, the trouble comes in when you're having multiple activities uh, in your challenge, and let's say you have a walking challenge and you have a weight loss uh, activity at the same time. So uh, your weight loss, somebody loses 5% of their body weight, they did amazing, that is a great job. Uh, the system sees that as a five. Uh, somebody walks five steps, uh, the system also sees that as a five. So you want to weight either the uh, the steps, give it a, a very small multiplier like 0 0.0001 or something along those lines. So uh, if I put 0 0.001 here, now they get one point for every thousand steps walked. Uh, or you could do the other side of that and for every percentage of body weight, maybe they are whatever, every pound loss, they get um, something like 30,000 steps or something along those lines. So it just allows you to put a multiplier um, to make your, your um, activities a little more equivalent. I'm just going to leave it default for now. We hit next. Uh, the next piece is asking how you want the data to be evaluated. Most of the time it's going to be cumulative. One day gets added to the next. So if they had 10,000 steps yesterday and 8,000 today, the leaderboard will show 18,000. Uh, difference percent descending, that is when you're using something like a weight loss challenge and you have a, a first way in and a last way in and you want to compare the two and then show the difference as a percentage, That this is the option that will do that. And various other uh, versions of that uh, below. So we'll just leave it at cumulative. Hit next. Uh, we select the start date and the end date. And uh, the important thing here is that your challenge, when we set that up, we didn't set it up with a start and an end date. Uh, since we can have multiple activities in our challenge, the challenge will start when the first activity starts and it will end when the last activity ends. Uh, this is important because you can have a different activity each week, uh, each month, uh, even each day if you want to, uh, or you can even put gaps in it or make them overlapping activities. So you can make your challenge... Um, really suit your needs. And you can also change it up a little bit so that your participants don't get uh, tired of running the same old challenge all the time. Um, add a little variety to it. 
So I'm just going to hit finish here. Our challenge is built. Um, now we have the option to add additional activities if we want or add participants. Since I need to speed things up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and start adding participants. I hit my little flashing plus here. Uh, first option is probably what you're going to use, uh, and it's just to generate an invitation link. If I click on next, uh, I'll see that it's created this kind of long URL for me uh, that I can use. I send that out to my participants in an email. Uh, so I'm going to newsletter. They can click on the link. It will take them to a registration page where they'll enter their first name, last name, and email address. So, and that's about the extent of the data that we collect about them as opposed, wow. Well, and in addition to any of the, uh, the details they enter is, uh, with their tracking. Um, so that is that is one way to do it. What I actually recommend is using a group page. So if you set up a group page, it allows you to select this, um, uh, create a customized URL. You set up the subdomain. In my case, I put test in here. You can really put anything you want up to 20 characters in here. And this never changes. This changes with each challenge. Um, this never changes. The importance behind that is, so you run a challenge this month, maybe in six months you want to run another challenge, you'll send out another link, um, the link being different, your participants, if they don't delete their emails, which many people don't, uh, they may be clicking on the wrong uh, link and then wondering why they can't get into the challenge. Once again, this one never changes and it's available to you. So I highly recommend using a group page. Um, then you also have a QR code if you have printed flyers. A lot easier than somebody trying to write down all of this is just using this QR code to take them to the link. So, um, other options, if you have your participants in a spreadsheet, uh, you can load them all from a CSV file. Once again, you just have your first name, last name, email address. You can load them directly into the system. I'm going to use a second option, which is to include selected prior participants. Uh, if I click on next, this just shows me um, some of my badly named uh, users here that I can select and drop in my new challenge. This is important um, because after your first challenge, maybe you just want to copy everybody from your first challenge into your next challenge. Don't want to have to bother with the, uh, the invitation link. You can go ahead and just simply put them into the next challenge. So we can click finish here. And now I have my participants in the system. If I switch to the user view, I can sort of see what the users are gonna see with a couple of caveats. So the first thing is your users obviously do not have a switch to admin view. I'm logged in as an admin, so I get to uh, I get switch back and forth. They also do not have a select participant dropdown. When your participant logs in, the system knows who they are. So uh, we uh, when Jane logs in, she doesn't see the select participant. But what you will see is this, which I should also mention um, the, uh, the logo at the top and all the colors can be changed as well if you don't like uh, dark blue and orange. Um, so we can, um, we can then put in some data for Jane. Now, if Jane had already uh, put in her tracker, her tracker would be pulling in data um, in a regular basis every 15 minutes. Um, if she wanted to set up a tracker, she would just click on trackers. Uh, then she would have the select uh, uh, tracker drop down so she could select Fitbit. Click on authorize. It would take her to uh, Fitbit.com where she would put in her Fitbit ID and password. It would then allow ask her if she wanted to allow Challenge Runner to collect data. She would hit allow and it would bring her back to Challenge Runner telling her that she was authorized and would then collect data for, like I said, every 15 minutes for the duration of the challenge. Uh, or in this case, we set up that we could manually enter data so she put in 6,000 steps, put in a little more information. So let's give John some data. Uh, so John, uh, we'll give him 7,000 steps. The system collects it automatically and then waits for me to make any changes. I didn't make them, so it refreshes the leaderboard. Uh, I'll put in just a little more information. Let's give Jill some data and just to see what the leaderboard looks like. All right, so the leaderboard's gonna continue to update. It's real time. Um, the, uh, I guess a few things I should mention on this page, uh, the description, this is where we can get to the description, obviously trackers, how we can uh, uh, use our, or enter our tracker information. Uh, if I wanna go back in time, I can use this log date and enter data for previous days. Um, if I put in a profile picture, it'll show up here on the leaderboard. 
Then uh, there's also this challenge comments. Now you have a few options for the challenge comments. Challenge comments, uh, this is a way for your users to put in any really submit anything they want. They can put images, they can put uh, text in here. Uh, so as an admin, you can leave the default option, which lets them put in whatever they want, whenever they want. Uh, you can also moderate this. So as an admin, you can, uh, you can see it and you have to check off on it before it ever gets released to anybody else. Um, you can make this one-way communication, so only admins can post data in here, or you can turn it completely off if you don't want to deal with it at all. So a few things you can do with the challenge comments. I should mention at this point that we also have an Android app and an iPhone app that works in very much the same way as this, uh, this user screen. So this is just for entering user information um, and uh, checking out the, uh, the leaderboard. So if we switch back to the admin view, um, let's see, I'll go back to the December challenge and we, uh, there's a few other options we have down here. We, uh, we can go in and enter challenge teams um, and we can see the leaderboard from a very different perspective then and there's a lot of different options we can use with that as well. Uh, but this was really just to create a, a, a quick uh, how-to uh, walking challenge demo. Uh, I will add additional uh, demos in the future showing how to use some of the other features. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please stop back again. Thank you.